Hi everybody, today I'm working on a 2010 Mini Cooper S Turbo. This car needs a new oil filter housing gasket. I'm also going to be replacing the oil turbo feed line because those tend to leak as well and the labor overlap is pretty substantial. The job is similar for turbo and non-turbo cars. Here's a non-turbo car so you can see what's going on. This is the filter housing right here and uh, we're gonna probably uh, leave the exhaust manifold in place and the turbo will stay in place, but we do need to remove the downpipe. On the turbo car, the turbo comes over the top of it and it's hard to see. For the turbo cars, you remove the downpipe, but you leave the turbo and the exhaust manifold in place. For the non-turbo cars, the entire downpipe and exhaust manifold comes off as a single unit. Other than that, the jobs are pretty much identical. The oil filter housing is under the turbo the front of the car is going to have to be put in front end service mode to do the job. Here's the parts. I'll put a link in the video description where you can get these. I like to install these uh, stainless braided lines instead of the OEM type. I have installed in the past the OEM type line and had it fail after installing and had to do the job again. So I prefer these ones. The parts are not that expensive, but this is a pretty labor intensive job. So there's a lot of savings to be had if you do the work yourself. This is the top of the oil turbo feed line. You can see there's a little bit of oil moisture here. This one hasn't failed yet, but it's starting to be at the end of life. So we'll get the car in the air and have a look underneath. And I've got a new lift, by the way. This is a Danmar Max Jax M6. Really nice lift. I'll put a link in the description where you can get this. It's designed to be a portable lift, but I've made it a semi-permanent installation with uh, the hydraulic line attached to the wall of the house. And I've installed the pump unit on the wall instead of on a rolling cart. And this just plugs into 120 volt household electric current. Super easy to install. And I got the Danmar Max Jacks because I have height limitations in my garage. This allows me to install a two post lift that goes up about 48 inches, which is exactly how much head space I have in the garage. All right, this is a pretty common leak on these cars. Pretty much any second generation Mini with the N12, N14, N16 or N18 engine is gonna get this leak. They seem to happen sooner if the car is not well maintained. So change your oil and maybe that'll help. The way you know that it's the oil filter housing gasket leak is you can see this seepage down the front side of the block and then it runs down onto the bell housing and the oil pan. The oil pan gaskets on these rarely leak. So if you see uh, seepage around the oil pan here, it's more likely that it's from the oil filter housing gasket and it's just running along the side. In order to do this job, we need to put the car into front end service mode. So I'm going to take the wheels off and take the bumper off and do all that stuff. First, I'll remove the hubcaps. Then I'll remove the wheels with the 17 mil socket. I'm gonna turn and remove these headlight bulb covers here because we're gonna peel back this wheel liner. I'll remove this one as well, just in case. If they're hard to turn, you can grab like some pliers and use them to increase your leverage. There's about four or so plastic fasteners here that I'm gonna unscrew. It helps to pull on them a little bit to keep the outside part from spinning while you spin the inside part with the screwdriver. And one more on the side here. Now we can pull the liner back and just kind of push it out of the way. And the reason we do this is because there's a couple of black clips here, one up here, one down here, which we need to remove before we can take the bumper off. I've got a nice fancy tool, which is used for body clips. I'll put a link in the description for this. Uh, you can use it to kind of get in here and uh, pull the center part up just like that and pull up and out. But it's also got a nice cutting edge here too. So if you're having trouble, you can just cut right through it and then you can use a zip tie. You just kind of get in and uh, give it a pinch. Grab the center and pull it out. If you don't have this tool, a screwdriver might work, but chances of su success are low. So you can always just cut these out and then use a zip tie. All right, underneath here, there's a couple of Torx T25. And then you're gonna find three more clips along the front. 
Sometimes they're chewed up like this because people run up onto the curb. If that happens, then you're just going to have to cut it off. Once we've made sure we've disconnected both of these inside clips, we can just uh, give a push here to pop the wheel arch off of the bumper. You just hit it like that and it pops free. I'll lower the car again to remove the parts that are holding the bumper from the top. Okay, so up top here, we're gonna need to remove the headlights, these Torx 30s that are holding the bonnet fasteners in place, a couple of 13 mils at the back, and there's a couple of uh, plastic clips as well along the right here and along the front as well. Thirteen mil. Then I'll remove the headlights and this outside one can stick sometimes. It might help to put some anti-seize before taking apart but sometimes these will be corroded onto the bushing and the only way to get them off is to drill them out. This car, we got lucky. Four bolts holding the headlight in. Pinch and squeeze. If you have uh, headlight washers, you'll need to disconnect the water line as well. Yeah, that one's seized up and so the, I'm gonna have to drill that one out probably. Sometimes you can also just spin it until it gets so hot that it pulls the bushing out as well because it's just held in by uh, brass centered to a plastic uh, bushing. See, you basically get it so hot that it spins free. There we go, got it. Oh, we got lucky that time the, the bolt came out by itself. This is the bushing I'm talking about. Basically, the bolt seizes onto that. Then we'll use a body clip tool to remove all these plastic push fasteners. One more here for the washer reservoir. A couple more 10 mil. Two on each side. And another one in the back for the turbo cars. Then we need to disconnect the uh, bonnet latch release, Bowden cable. And then I'll close this back up and uh, push this all through the hole as I take this part off. Instead of removing the upper crash support completely, you could also just disconnect it and leave it in place like this. It won't really be in the way. Next, we need to remove the top grill. It's, it's blocking a couple of screws we need to get to. There's a couple of push clips on each side. You can just get your finger or a long screwdriver in there and push on them to release. And another one in the middle. And then that comes off. So behind here we'll find a couple more 25 Torx. There's a couple of fasteners behind here. So on the back side here there's a couple of uh, body clips. I'll just pinch them with uh, needle pliers. And then there's another one farther up. And then I'll just shove something in here to keep them from reclipping themselves. And then behind here you'll see there's another T25 as well as a 10 mil regular hex. So that's all the bolts holding the bumper on. We can just pull it forward. You're going to find a couple of clips for the lighting and then one here for the temp sensor as well. Sometimes they're a little sticky from corrosion. And now we can put the bumper aside. Next, we need to remove these three 13 mil bolts on each side, or nuts, I mean. Also, usually there's a belt cover here. This one, the car is missing, but you'd need to remove that as well with a couple of Phillips fasteners. And then underneath, there's gonna be a couple of 16 mil crash tube bolts as well. We'll remove these front 13 mil bolts, or nuts. And then we're going to want to screw in something to hold the bumper from falling off when we pull it forward. You can slide the weight of the sub front, the modular front end onto, onto this. There's still a couple of things attached to the front, the modular front end here. 
We've got the air tube here that's attached. There's going to be a couple clips here. I'm going to pop free. And we're going to want to also uh, remove the bolt for the reservoir. And then I'll get in here with a screwdriver and we just kind of pin pinch to uh, pull the air tube free. And I'm also going to remove the uh, intake here for the turbo car because when I pull it forward, it's going to try to pull this uh, hose here. And this is usually kind of glued on here, so I'm going to take the screwdriver and work the way around to uh, crack the two parts apart. And once you've done that, sometimes it helps to put like some WD-40 in there or something. Then you can work the hoses apart. Then I'll take a small BFH, making sure not to hit any wires. I'll tap on the metal part to cause the front of the uh, modular front end to come forward. I'll do a little bit on this side, then I'll come around the other side, do the same thing. When we remove the filter housing, it's gonna leak both oil and water. So we're, we're gonna wanna put a catch bucket under there. And also we need to uh, drain the coolant as well. So I'm gonna loose, so I'm gonna loosen the fill cap. First, I'm gonna take this top heat shield off because I wanna get some penetrating oil onto the turbo bolts. I need a 7 8 inch or a uh, O2 sensor socket. Give it a little bit of a hit there. Unscrew this, put it out of the way. And then on the turbo car, this uh, O2 sensor wiring bracket's in the way, so I have to remove this, put this out of the way. And then I remove, looks like there's about five or six 10 mil bolts holding the heat shield in place. This car is missing a bolt. And we can pull the heat shield up and out. These three bolts uh, can be problematic. The stud here is actually very soft. So I'm gonna hit them with a little penetrating oil. And then I'll go underneath and remove one of these hose clamps on the bottom here. This is how you get the fluid out on a mini. And then I'll grab my bucket and put it underneath and you just kind of grab and uh, separate the hose to get the coolant to come out. It tends to drip for a while. So just leave the bucket under here for like a few minutes. All right, next uh, we need to remove the lower heat shield, but uh, the alternator uh, current, the alternator positive current is right here. And there's a very good chance I'm gonna hit this while pulling it out. So I'll, I'll disconnect the battery. So this is the exhaust manifold, which goes into the turbo and that goes into the downpipe. And uh, we're gonna probably uh, leave the exhaust manifold in place and the turbo will stay in place, but we do need to remove the downpipe. The turbo feed line goes around the back side of the turbo and then it goes in behind. There's two heat shields. There's a front and a back heat shield and the turbo feed line and one of the bolts for the filter housing gasket are behind the rear heat shield. So I'm going to disconnect the turbo feed line from the top of the turbo now. It's got this um, miniature heat shield for it. You're going to want to save that. And you can see it's got a uh, fitting here and it's just like a rubber, rubber o-ring and over time it degrades and you can see this one is starting to get a little sticky. It won't be too long before this starts leaking and dripping down over the top of the turbo and that's a uh, 17 mil. It's not under pressure or anything so you can loosen it and not really spill. Do pay attention there's going to be a brass washer on each side of the banjo bolt. See, there it is. Sometimes it sticks onto other parts. The new kit should come with a new bolt and washers, but you don't want to lose those parts. All right, I'm going to lift the car back up again to get this uh, front heat shield off. Oh yeah, and make sure to grab your tool before raising the car so you don't have to go up and climb it, climb for it. Okay, so now we get a better view underneath with more room here. Uh, and this heat shield is held on by four 10 mil bolts. Well, it looks like on this car we got another bolt missing. There should be one up here on, on each side and then one on the bottom. So you want a nice long extension. And that lets us pull the heat shield out. So that gives enough room to pull the heat shield up through the top. So there's a couple uh, 13s and a 16 to, to attach the downpipe. We'll need a deep drive for these two gold colored bolts. 
We'll need a 16 deep drive for this uh, exhaust clamp. Push the bolt out. I like to use a pair of snap ring pliers to push the clamp back so we can uh, get it off of the other part of the exhaust. And I need a 7 to 8 inch wrench to uh, disconnect the O2 sensor. Then we'll go back up top and look at these 13 mil bolts holding the rest of the downpipe on. Hopefully there's been enough time for the penetrating oil to soak in. They're usually not very tight. You just give them a little twist and they should come free. So be gentle backing them off. If it feels like they're starting to get tight, I would tighten the bolt back down again and make sure the threads look good. Sometimes the stud will back out with the bolt. Okay, so now we can take the downpipe off. And pull it out. This is aftermarket, obviously, no cap. All right, so we're almost there. There's a couple more 10 mil bolts, two on the top. Uh, there's a 13 mil bolt in the center. And then on the side here, there's a 10 mil bolt to allow this support arm to swing out. And then we can get this heat shield off. Then we'll grab a 10 mil ratcheting wrench to uh, loosen the bolt and allow this arm to swing out of the way. So get that 13 mil out. All right, now we can see the problem area. So uh, under here, this is where the turbo feed line comes in. We'll be removing this. And then this is the one bolt for the uh, oil filter housing gasket that was hidden behind the heat shield. So we'll disconnect the other end of the turbo feed line. Also 17 mil. And then this thing, you fish it out and then you just kind of wiggle it out of there. So this is what the old one looks like. And this part here leaks over time. This is a really common leak that affects pretty much all second generation minis. And then you've got the turbo oil return line as well. These can be replaced also, although they don't leak nearly as bad. And this one is held on by an eight millimeter bolt pointing upside down. And on the bottom, there's a pinch clip here. You just pinch that and then you can pull the hose off. Okay, so I'll remove the oil filter housing now. And it's held on by about four 8 mil bolts. And when I pull it, it's going to make a big mess with oil and coolant. So I'll put a drain pan underneath it to catch all that. The first two bolts are right on top of each other, next to the, or behind the heat shield. A little hard to see. Here's the two bolts. One down here, one here. And the next two bolts, there's one right here underneath. And the last one is up on the top, right here. So I'm not going to disturb it until I get the bolt the whole way out. Because as soon as I pull on the filter housing, it'll separate and all the, all the coolant and all the oil is going to leak out and make a big mess. And I don't want to be underneath it. Okay, we got all four bolts out. All right, now if I pry on it here, it should pop loose and make a big mess. I'll wait a little bit here for the engine to finish draining its coolant. Go take a coffee break or something. So I'll pull down a little bit to get the turbo feed line out of the turbo. That'll allow the filter housing to rotate so that I can get to the gasket and replace the gaskets. All right, so working from the bottom, I'm going to use a pick tool to pry out the old uh, gaskets. They can be quite stiff. Yeah, this one's turned into plastic, basically. It might not even come off in one piece. Don't forget the upper gasket. So here's the old gasket versus the new gasket. New one's nice and rubbery. The, the old one is turned into plastic almost. And we'll clean up a little bit here and then attach the new gasket in the correct orientation. You just squeeze it and it goes right in. You want to make sure it's fully seated. And then lift back up into position. 
and hand thread the bolts back in. And the last one goes in the top. Just make them snug. Okay, so that's that. And we'll put the bolt in holding the uh, turbo return oil line back in. Next, we'll install the new turbo feed line. And this, this comes with uh, new uh, hose ends that don't have any gasket so there's nothing to leak. This is just a compression fitting with a couple of nice brass washers. So you put it together like this and then uh, we, we screw the hose end into the end of it. So first I'll get on the shop ladder. I'll go up here and uh, we'll put the turbo feed line through. Fish it up through there. It's easier to fish up from the bottom, it looks like. And grab onto it and pull it the rest of the way up. Be sure that it goes behind the uh, little ear here for the heat shield. And then you just kind of put it where it needs to go. We need to make sure we put one of the washers on each side of the banjo bolt. Just like this. And we'll kind of dry fit it. Tighten it down by hand. So this one should go roughly like this. And we'll do the same at bottom, remembering to put the brass washer on each side of the banjo. Thread it in by hand. Get the hose where we like it. And thread it into the side of the block. So when we're done, it should sit kind of pointing out just whatever angle you need to take up the excess play, excess length of the hose. And then we'll tighten it down. It's about as tight as it needs to be. Be sure that this is tight and you didn't just tighten it hand tight and then forgot about it. Because then you have to do the job all over again. Make it nice and tight. And then we'll put this heat shield thingy back in. And it just clips over the top of the hose. Just like that. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. The rest of the assembly is uh, reverse of disassembly. The only difference is uh, adding the coolant back to the engine. There's a bleed screw right here on the right side of the cylinder head, which you can use to bleed air as you put the coolant back in. Other than that, assembly is the opposite of disassembly. The rest is pretty much just the same thing except backward. Let me know in the comments section if you have any questions. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and share. Check out the purchase links for parts and tools I use for this job. And check out my other Mini Cooper repair videos. Thanks for watching and bye bye.